Hello everyone, this is Yoan, and today I've got a new wallet project to share. So we're gonna make this small trifold wallet. This is a fun and functional little wallet. The finished measurements of this wallet are approximately four and a half inch by four and a quarter inch when it's closed like this. And when it is open, the finished measurements are approximately 11 inches by four and a half inch. There are six card slots plus two additional hidden compartments where you can put more cards or receipts or anything else. This wallet also comes with two slots for cash so you can easily organize your money, maybe separating the smaller notes from the larger notes. If you travel abroad, you can easily separate the foreign currency in your wallet. There's also a little zipper pocket to keep some coins. For this wallet, I used cotton quilting fabric, so I used up two fat quarters. This one, I experimented with vinyl or four layer fabric and I skipped the zipper to make this uh, much simpler in design and less bulky. Now with this wallet I made with an extra layer of RFID blocking fabric. So if you are concerned about this kind of crime where somebody will scan your belonging and try to steal your credit card information, this can be a great option for you. All right, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and without further ado, let's get started. First, we're going to work with panel 1 or the main card pocket panels. So you want to cut two rectangles from fabric B. Fuse the wrong side with fusible woven interfacing. Center the position. Draw the fold lines on the wrong side, just like shown on the screen right now. So this side will be the top of the pocket and this side will be the bottom of the pocket. We're going to start folding and pressing from the bottom. First, we're gonna fold this last line or the three and a quarter inch line. I align my ruler with the folding line and then fold towards the top, just like that. Finger press to create the crease and then press. Now you wanna open the fold and then fold the next line towards the bottom. So you wanna maintain the first folding line and this is how it should look like on the right side. And then press. Now let's fold the next line or the two and a half inch line towards the top and then press. Now you want to open the fold and then fold the last line towards the bottom. Again maintaining the previous fold lines and then press and then you want to flip this to the right side and again press this real good. So you should end up with something like this. Now you want to top stitch the pleat lines. You may top stitch with an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth of an inch of seam allowance. And once you've done that, base stitch the sides with one eighth of an inch of seam allowance to hold the pleats in place. Now we're going to trim the bottom so that it will measure four and a half inch. So here I'm aligning my ruler at four and a half inch point and then trim the little excess fabric at the bottom. And there you go. Now let's prepare panel two. So you will need to cut two rectangles four and a half inch by four and a half inch. Lay the pocket panel and panel two right sides together and then sew the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Press the seams open and then fold wrong sides together just like that. Press this again and then top stitch. So you want to repeat the same to the other pieces of panel one and two and you should end up with two identical pocket panels. Now you want to take panel 3, so you will need to cut two pieces, each from fabric A and fabric B. Now take the one with fabric A and then lay your pocket on the right side and then place the other piece just like so. So the top edges of your pocket panels should be facing towards the center and of course you want to align all the row edges. Now let's secure this in place with some clips and then base stitch all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. Now let's take the other panel 3 and lay that right side down and then stitch along the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Press the seams open and then fold wrong sides together. Press it again and then top stitch. Now you want to take panel 4 and lay them right sides together and then sew along the top edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Press the seams open and then fold wrong sides together. Press it again and then top stitch. Now you want to take the card pocket panel and lay that on top of panel 4. So you want to align the sides and the bottom edges and then base stitch with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And there you go. 
Now take panel 5 and lay that right side up and then take the pocket panel and lay that on top of it right side up and of course you want to align the sides and the bottom edges and again you want to base stitch this with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance and you should end up with something like this and you can see the two money compartments forming now we're gonna work on panel 6 or the third card pocket panel fuse the wrong side with some fusible woven interfacing and you want to center the position now you want to draw the folding lines just like shown on the screen right now so this side will be the top of the pocket and this side will be the bottom of the pocket and of course you want to draw the folding lines on the wrong side now as usual we're gonna start folding from the bottom so let's start by folding the last line on the 4 inch line again I'm aligning my ruler and then fold towards the top finger press and then press now let's open the fold and then we're gonna fold the next line towards the bottom and of course you want to maintain the previous folding line and then press now let's fold the next line towards the top and then press now we're gonna open the fold and then fold the last line towards the bottom again you don't want to mess with the previous folding lines and then go ahead and press this real good top stitch along the pleat lines and then base stitch the sides with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance once you've done that let's trim off the bottom so that this pocket panel will measure five and a half inch tall and there you go now we're gonna attach this to the right hand side of the wallet panel so let's lay the card pocket panel right side down just like that and then stitch with quarter of an inch of seam allowance once you've done that you want to press the seams towards panel 6 and then top stitch and voila the wallet interior is done now let's work on the zipper pocket if you wish to add the zipper pocket so we're gonna use the regular nylon coil zipper and you want to trim off your zipper so that the entire length will be five and a half inch now we're gonna sew the zipper tab so you want to cut two little rectangles and then you want to fold the long sides in half wrong sides together just like so position that on the edge of the zipper aligning the edges of the zipper with the edges of the zipper tab now you may secure this in place with some sewing clips and then repeat the same to the opposite side again you want to make sure to align the edges of the zipper and the edges of the zipper tab and then stitch along the folded edges with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance trim off the excess zipper tab to be the same width as the zipper tape now let's trim off the edges of the zipper about quarter of an inch from the seams of the zipper tab this way the side seams will not be too bulky now take panel 7 fuse the wrong side with some fusible woven interfacing cut the interfacing smaller and then when you apply the interfacing you want to make sure to cover the top edges or where the zipper is going to be installed lay panel 7 right side up I'm going to baste my zipper with basting tape so I'm gonna go ahead and apply this along the top edges now take the zipper with the start of the zipper at your right hand side and lay that right side down finger press so that the zipper will be sticking to the fabric now take panel 8 or the inner pocket panel and lay that right side down and then finger press so that the fabric will be sticking to the basting tape once everything is secured go ahead and stitch this in place with quarter of an inch of seam allowance all right now let's turn this to the right side and then press the seams both the exterior and the interior as well and top stitch and there you go now you want to take panel line or the upper panel fuse the wrong side with some fusible woven interfacing the same way like before and this time you want to make sure that the bottom part of the panel or the side where the zipper will be installed is covered with the interfacing now let's lay this right side up with the bottom edge facing up and then apply some basting tape now take the zipper and then lay that right side down just like so apply some basting tape on the edges of the zipper tape and then bring the bottom edge of panel 8 towards the edges of the zipper just like so once everything is secured you want to sew with quarter of an inch of seam allowance and once you've done that you want to press the seams and top stitch 
Now you want to base stitch the sides where the inner pocket is sitting to hold it in place. Now let's trim off the bottom so that this will measure 12 inches long. And voila, our wallet exterior is done. Now if you wish to add the RFID blocking fabric, this is the time to do it. RFID blocking fabric looks just like this. It is relatively thin. You may treat this as an interlining and incorporate this in any wallet or purse pattern if you feel that's necessary. So you want to cut one piece exactly the same size as the wallet panel. Lay the wallet interior on top of the RFID fabric with the wrong side facing down, just like so. Secure that in place with some clips and then base stitch all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And you should end up with something like this. And that's pretty much it. Now you can continue on with the rest of the steps. Now we're gonna work on the button flap. So cut up a little rectangle and fuse the wrong side with some visible woman interfacing. Now you wanna fold the long sides in half, right sides together, and then stitch the side edges with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now let's turn this inside out and then poke the corners Make them nice and flat. Now you want to press this real quick. And once you've done that, go ahead and top stitch. Mark half an inch from the bottom edge of the flap. Right on the center, of course. And then install the button's cap on that mark according to the manufacturer's instructions. Position the button flap on the top edge of the wallet exterior or the side that is closer to the zipper. And of course, you want to center the position and the flap should be facing right side down. And then you want to stitch this in place with quarter of an inch of seam allowance. Now let's mark the position for the button stud. So from the bottom edge of your wallet or the side that is further from the zipper, you want to measure three and a half inch. Put a little mark there and of course you want to center the position. And then on the wrong side, you want to apply a little extra interfacing just to stabilize the button area. And then install the button stud according to the manufacturer's instructions. And voila, the wallet exterior is done. Now we're going to assemble our wallet interior. Now you want to make sure that this side where the third credit card panel sitting with the one with different orientation will be facing the exterior side where the button flap is sitting. So let's lay this right side down. And it doesn't hurt to double check again just to make sure that the position is correct. Now let's secure this in place with some sewing clips. And once you've done that, you want to sew all around with 3 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And you want to leave about 4 inches of opening at the top of the wallet to turn this inside out later. So I'm sewing from the top where the marking of the opening is. And as always, I like using my walking foot. It is great to sew through many layers of fabric and it will evenly distribute everything. Snip all the corners, be careful not to cut through the stitches. Now we're gonna trim off the seam allowances of the bottom and the sides. Do not trim the seam allowances of the top or where the opening hole is, since we needed that extra fabric to close the opening hole later. Trim the seam allowances as close as you can to the seam line. Be careful not to cut through the stitches, of course. Now let's turn the wallet inside out through the opening hole. Poke all the corners, make them nice and flat. You may use point turner, chopstick, or knitting needle. Fold the raw edges of the opening hole towards the wrong side, about 3 8 of an inch, and then clip. At this point, if you wish to, you may go to your ironing board and press your wallet. When you do the pressing, be mindful with your zipper and the hardware. You may want to choose lower heat setting. If you use the RFID blocking fabric, you may need to choose the lowest heat setting and do this very sparingly. The last step will be to top stitch this all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. I like to start sewing from the center of one of the sides, still using my walking foot. As you get to the top, you may want to push the fabric underneath or the panel for the middle cash lot out of the way because it may get caught when you're stitching. If your machine can't handle too much bulk, it may be helpful to use a slight larger needle such as jean size needle and setting up your stitch length to be a slight longer than usual can do the trick too. And that's pretty much it guys, the wallet is done. 
I want to briefly show you a different variation here. So this one I use vinyl fabric or faux leather. This is a relatively thin vinyl so it's really really easy to work with. And I chose to leave out the zipper. So feel free to experiment with different kind of fabric for the exterior of your wallet. You can use canvas, denim, and of course if you choose heavier weight fabric you may leave out the interfacing. So for the interior of this wallet, I use cotton quilting fabric and I assemble this wallet exactly the same way. That's about it for today guys. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, goodbye!